Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own insect hotel for solitary bees and potter's wasps. Stay tuned. Guys, welcome back to Green Thumbs Garden. My name's Alex, and if this is your first time here and you love gardening videos, horticulture, plant care, and DIY, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you don't miss a single upload. Today, we're going to be making this awesome insect hotel made for solitary bees and potter's wasps. If you've been reading the news recently, you'll know that since 1990, global insect populations are down by 25 percent now that's a shocking number so what can we do to try and help our insect friends especially uh, our pollinators and predatory insects that will help look after our vegetable garden or our flower gardens and keep destructive insects down one thing we could do is try and make more habitable uh, locations for our insects especially our insects that are going to help take care of our vegetable garden like our pollinators our um, predatory wasps that help keep down caterpillars and other uh, destructive insects at the end of the video we're going to talk about some of the things you can do right now this minute to help fight back and reclaim some of that insect population the best part is it's completely free in fact it'll probably save you some money and it'll be better for your health so make sure you watch to the end of the video we're also going to talk about some of the things to keep in mind when you finish building your insect hotel so let's get into the build okay so what you're going to need to build this bee hotel or bee house is some wood some scrap wood you can go out and buy wood if you want to I prefer to use scrap wood, what's lying around. For instance, pallets are great for these kind of projects and it don't cost you a single penny. I'm all about saving as much money as I can. So we've got some junk wood here, it's all cut up. The most important thing is make sure the wood you use, whether it's pallets or, or whatever, it's not treated. You don't want treated wood, chemically treated. Some pallets are chemically treated or things like chipboard or MDF. You don't want to use anything like that. It's full of poisons, fungicides and glues, whatever. I don't know what they put in there. So once you've got your wood and you've got it all cut to size, and I'll put the measurements in the description, maybe a little PDF of the plan of, of what we've built here. I'm just making it up as I go along. I've got an idea of how I want how I want it to turn out at the end. But you know, um, I'm not you don't don't worry about the sizes too much. You know, um, we've got our roof. Our roof size is a little bit bigger because we want a nice overhang there. So when it rains, it protects our um, little tubes our little wooden tools that we stick in there from moisture. So once you've cut your pieces down to size, we just want to sand off our edges, to make them nice and smooth, and it'll not cause any harm to our solitary wasps and bees. At the end of the video, we'll talk about painting. If you do want to paint it up or put some something on here to protect the wood, about what products you can use and will it be all right if you don't bother painting it at all. So let's start by putting our roof together. So the screws I've got are really small. So uh, I'm going to use a couple of these L-shaped links that I've got to put our roof together and a bit of glue as well. And we'll just stick it together just like that. Now you don't need to use these L joints. If you had actually nice long screws, I'd have just put a screw right through there and just bashed it together like that. So we've got our L bits in like this. Remember, you don't need the brackets. I'm just doing it like this because that's all I've got. And we're just going to stick it in like that. So we're just going to put a line of glue in there. This Gorilla glue is awesome. Stick that in there like that. It'll act as a seal as well. When it rains, at least that'll act as a seal because we don't want our little hotel getting wet. Remember to stick to the end of the video. We're going to talk about some of the maintenance that needs to be done to keep your bee hotel or bee house, whatever, 
in top ship shape order because believe it or not they do need a tiny little bit of maintenance so we'll get these last screws in here and then we'll get on with the main body of the build right so we've got the roof ready what we're going to do though i'm just going to stick a nice big line of this glue here and then when that dries that'll act as a nice seal just to stop any water leaking through we want to keep our bees nice and dry all right let's leave this to dry so let's build the main part which is going to house our tubes and our little logs if you've got any wood drill bits for your drill it comes in handy we want to drill a few little pilot holes because otherwise with a screw we can easily split the wood so if we just drill a couple of little thin holes just so the screw can slide in nicely that will stop and avoid you splitting your wood i'll put some links into the description for some um, wood bits they're really cheap i mean these dexter ones it's the mark from a shop out here really nice drill bits and i think there were a fiver for the set you know and the last for ages when you're building your bird boxes and other little gardening projects but i'll put some in the description some links if that will uh, if you'll find that helpful one here like that and one there want a little slap dab of wood glue just a little dab a little dab will do ya like that a little dab will do ya So we've got the main frame made of our bee hotel we're going to put in now a couple of shelves which is going to house some of our little logs we'll just make sure that's all equal so i'm just marking the center where my screws can go so they go nice and center into the wood Excellent, so we've got the main frame and foundation of our bee house. Now we're going to stick on the roof. We've made it extra wide so you've got a nice overhang. So we'll just line that up so it's perfectly there, just like that. That's looking pretty weeny. That's the frame of our house. We're going to nail this in now. If, if I could buy some nice skinny long screws, I'd just stick in one screw here and one screw there with a bit of glue and that would hold it all nice and tight but we haven't I've got some short little scrubby screws and they just never get in there but I've got these little nails I think we'll be able to stick in two nails on either side with some wood glue and that should just do the trick and I found a rubber hammer lying around and it's that old that the rubber it's doesn't feel that rubbery anymore i'm hoping i can drive in a few nails with it before it breaks into pieces and dies so if it can do that as its last job i'll class that as an honorable death for the hammer excellent so let's get some wood glue right on that corner let's blab it on there so it can make a good seal nice and generous there right on the edge so it kind of falls into it and I've just marked on my side exactly where it needs to be excellent so I'm going to recruit my wife to hold this and give it some pressure while I drive a couple of nails on each side otherwise it'll be going all over the place and I'll be making a right big mess so I'm going to put one right here right there like that hopefully should be just fine Let's put some counterweight there Whoa, it's holding up it's holding up tell you you just got to make do with what you've got you know 
Yeah, we'll put another one right there. I'm just being careful. I don't want to hit the screws I've stuck in there. So we'll get another one in and then two in on the other side. It's holding up, eh? Can't believe it. When Alicia pulled out this rubber hammer, she says, oh, we've got a hammer. I laughed my head off, but, but it's working. It's working. Sometimes you just got to make do with what you've got. Especially in these circumstances when we can't just go out and buy stuff. Ooh. Little chunk came off then, but it's holding up, it's holding up. So now we're going to put a bit of wire mesh on the back. You don't need to use any backing, you could just leave it like that and start filling it up as we'll, we'll do in a minute. But the wire mesh will just give it a little bit more security, it'll hold things together a little bit more when we staple it in and it'll stop things slipping out. But it is optional, you don't need to really do it. So we've got the back now with this, we stapled it on and now it's going to be ready to fill with our little apartment. Now we need to cut our bamboo to size. When you collect your bamboo, make sure you get lots of different sizes, big ones, little ones. This one will suit a carpenter bee, for instance, and the little ones will be awesome for little wasps and solitary bees. Excellent, so we've got one little tube here. We're gonna need a whole bunch of these. So we'll continue chopping these tubes, and I tell you, use a glove if you've got one. Clean them off with a bit of sandpaper, them rough edges, just like that. Stick that in there. So what you might have to do is get rid of some of these nobbles. Now I'm just using my axe just to shave them off, but you can use a nice good sharp knife as well. You don't need to do it on all of them, but when you start packing it in here, you'll notice that the nobbles will start pushing pushing the tubes apart. So when you just shave them off, just makes it squeeze in a lot nicer. Like that, look at that. Feel, look how tight that is now. And what we're doing is we're just packing them in and we keep squeezing them in with pressure so that it doesn't move. We don't need any glue. And I'll tell you at the end of the video why we prefer to do it with pressure and tension rather than gluing them in. Okay, so once you've got your little logs cut to size, we need to drill some holes in them. Be very careful that you don't hurt yourself. These wood drill bits can be extremely sharp. So we're using our feet here um, to hold the piece of wood. It's much more safer unless you've got a clamp that you can clamp it in and drill it that way. That's even better, but we're going to use our feet. It's pretty safe. So we're drilling about two inches down. We don't want to go all the way to the end. All right, so when you fit in your little logs in together, you might need to split some of these logs into half or a quarter or even an eighth so you can fit them in and slot them in as you can see as I've done here. I'm going to show you how you can do that. Obviously I've been using my axe to do it but I'm going to show you how you can do it just with a normal kitchen knife. Obviously I know not everyone's going to have an axe at home and that doesn't mean that you can't build this project because you haven't got an axe. You can do it easily with a kitchen knife. I'm going to split this little log now into a half, into a quarter and into an eighth so you can see how easily it can be done. You need a little chopping board and I've been using this a lot to be getting rid of the ridges as you saw earlier. Now I'm going to be using it to split this little log. So um, if you just watch here, you get your little log set up like that. And we just now tap at the end, as you can see, pushing the knife all the way down to the bottom. And now we've got our half. Now we're gonna make a quarter. And we just basically do the same again with the kitchen knife. 
just tap gently like that look until you can see it split now we've got a quarter and we can even do it again into an eighth so now we've got this quarter our eighth and a half half moon Excellent, so now we're going to protect this with a little bit of linseed oil. You can use linseed oil, which is natural, and it'll give the wood a nice protection from the elements. Obviously, we're not putting it anywhere around here. We're just going to rub it on the sides and on the, on the roof and on the bottom, and we'll just rub a little bit on here. But mainly, we're concerned about just protecting the sides and the roof. You could also use beeswax or wax and, and rub that on as a natural protection. And if you was going to use paint, then use acrylic. Some Don't use uh, synthetic paints. Use a good non-toxic. If, if you go to the paint shop, ask the people for a non-toxic acrylic paint. What you use to paint beehives with. That's what I used to paint our beehives. And it's non-toxic once it's dried really well and obviously only paint around the sides don't be sticking it anywhere where the bees and wasps are going to be nesting so we're just going to apply linseed oil as that's the um, most natural looking finish that we want it all you'll be able to see the wood and we just pour a little bit of oil like that onto a rag and we just rub it on just rub it all over like that. So why are we not using any glues to hold all this in position? Well, one of the reasons is we want to be able to replace any of these tubes in time. Could be a year, could be two years, could be less. That if you notice any of these tubes get mouldy or dirty, um, it's good that in time we replace a few to keep it nice and clean even in two years we might want to replace the lot just to make sure that no mite populations or other pests or diseases habitat this and start passing it on to anyone who makes a home in this little hotel. So what can you do to try and help fight back and help reclaim some of that missing insect population? The main thing all of us need to do is to stop buying and using chemical pesticides on our plants and using things that is natural or organic to look after our garden. Absolutely refusing to use these commercial insecticides and herbicides in our garden or have immediate benefits. First, it's going to be better for our environment locally. That's going to also be better for us and our bodies. We're not going to be slowly consuming these insecticides as they work their way into our body. Also, it's going to save our pocket and that's always a good thing. So guys, if you want to watch next how you can make an awesome little ladybird refuge for your garden, then hit this video in the top corner. Also, let us know what eco-friendly solutions you've managed to use to good effect in your garden. Let us know in the comments. Let's get a discussion going down there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up and share it with your friends. That's a huge help to my channel and an awesome support. I couldn't ask you for anything more. Guys, thanks. It's been really fun making this video and, and um, communicating.